أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ القدائق يجمعين وباعث الأنبياء والمرسلين الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب في شهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى ثم السلات والسلام والتحية والإكرام على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين الرسول المؤيد والنبي الممجد المصطفى الأمجد أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين لا سيما على الإمام المنتظر وحجة الله الثاني عشر ابن العسكري المنتظر ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فإن الله الصادق العليم قال في كتابه الكريم القرآن الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بقية الله خير لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين سلامات Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm aware last night I took a few more minutes of the speech and the time was exceeded and the intention was that I would have to take some more time again tonight in view of the discussion that was still remaining and in view of the shortage of time that we have. However, I do not think that tonight I will be able to take an excessive time. It will definitely affect the eventual continuation of the series, primarily because I'm not keeping well today. Since morning I've been unwell even now, overcome with immense weakness. But tonight is the night of Hadrat Abbas, and we have to talk about Abbas. And in trying to talk to Abbas about Abbas, it is important that we continue our topic that we had left off last night. I will try to go with the same pace as I usually go. But if there is any shortcoming, inshallah, in your magnanimity, you would overlook it. Salwala Muhammad Last night we discussed and we reached to a point when we had said that the Sufiani's khuruj, which was one of those signs, min al mahtum, definite signs before the reappearance of the 12th Imam. And we discussed the entire sequence of the first two phases, of the three phases of the persecution and the campaign of this person Sufiani about whom the tradition says Imam would not come till Sufiani comes. Khurujul Sufiani min al-Mahtum. 
and we discussed where he would come from and what his traits were and we reached and at that time we had indicated last night that from the time that his campaign would begin till the time his campaign would end his death would be a period of 15 months in these 15 months he would do a lot of things he would accomplish a lot of, of accomplishments and this entire period of 15 months could be divided into three phases two phases were discussed yesterday and we reached at a point where his army moving from Medina to Makkah in pursuit of the 12th Imam in the center in a particular region between Makkah and Medina would face divine wrath and a miraculous perdition at the hands of Hadrat Jibreel upon the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we said was one of the most one of the third, three five signs of the arrival of the 12th Imam the swallowing of the army of Sufiani by means of the earth between Makkah and Medina one of the signs so as of now up to now out of those five signs la budda min qabl khuruj al qaim khamsun before the arrival of the qaim five things will definitely take place we've heard about the yamani we've heard about the sufiani we heard about the eating the swallowing of the army of sufiani between Makkah and Medina what remains are two more things but before we go to those two, two more things we still have the third phase that is remaining remember we said the life the entire 15 months of Sufiani three phases two phases we've discussed up to the point where his army is annihilated and those two individuals remain the two brothers Bashir and Nadir one goes to Sufiani to tell him that your army has been vanquished the wrath of Allah has descended the other one goes to the 12th Imam and informs him and gives him the glad tidings the army of Sufiani has been vanquished at this point of time Imam is in, Madi is in Makkah remember he was in Medina he was told to go to Makkah in Makkah, the army of Sufiani followed, tried to follow him. That army succumbed to divine wrath. Its tradition say, from this point onwards, Imam comes back to Medina. And here the third phase of Sufiani's life history begins to manifold. The first phase was the consolidation of his power in, in, in Sham and the regions of Sham. That means Syria, that means Jordan, that means Palestine. And, and that means Lebanon all of these came under his control the second part what is attack on Hijaz and Iraq the attack on Kufa the attack on Makkah the attack on Medina the attempted attack on Makkah the second phase com completes over here and then begins the third phase the third phase talks about the consolidation having witnessed having to been told that his army now got vanquished between Makkah and Medina now Sufiani was in Sham he began begins to consolidate his power in Sham because he realizes a time will come when, we, when he will have to face a, there will be a confrontation between himself and the Imam and this third phase he begins consolidating his power in Sham now as soon as Imam's Dhuhr has taken place and this is the reason Sufiani told his army that go to Makkah, go to Medina, then go to Makkah in pursuit of the Imam. Imam's Dhuhr has been done but he still not started his mission of global revolution and establishment of peace. It is at this point of time that now this incident between Makkah and Medina, the swallowing of the by the earth of the army of Sufiani suddenly spreads across the world like wildfire everybody now they had come to know the Imam has come but this was the first mirac miraculous or miracle that they had witnessed at the hands or because of the Imam and suddenly the word begins to spread at those times and at this time all those people who were under the persecution of Sufiani now slowly begin to shift their loyalties out of fear or whatever from Sufiani that they had to now realizing that a Messiah has come a savior has come and you will find a lot of people moving out from the folds of Sufiani coming and wanting to come into the forces of, 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 this, of the twelfth Imam. It is at this point of time that then, in anticipation of a final battle, certain months pass by, each, po each party, each side plans out its own strategies. <coughs> till it, was became in, it became inevitable that the two parties will stand in confrontation. It was at this time, it will be at this time, that Imam will pass a message to Sufiani. Let's sit and talk this out. We do not want to go to war. Come and let's sort it out as a diplomatic ma maneuver. 
Sufiani accepts the call of Imam. He comes to the Imam. Imam sits, discusses with him, tells him his mission, tells him who is he, gives him proofs. At that time, tradition says that Sufiani becomes completely impressed, becomes immensely impressed with, with, with the personality of the Imam. Over there, at that point of time, he says, I'm giving up my opposition against you. I'm giving up my opposition to you. I'm laying down my arms. I'm putting my army under your disposal. I am doing bay'at at your hands. Sufiani does the bay'at at the hands of Imam Zamana. After doing the bay'at, it was thought the issue was done, done and dusted. This issue is completely gone. No opposition to the Imam from Sufiani. Sufiani, after coming to Medina, after coming to Medina and discussing with Imam, it was decided everything was done. But as soon as he goes back to Sham, he faces a backlash. He faces a backlash from his commanders. He faces a backlash from his family members. Specifically, tradition says his maternal uncles that belong to the Qabila, Qabila to Kalb. Qabila to Kalb is the Qabila of the dogs. That was the name given to the Qabila. Tribes were given various names in those days Qabila Bani Asad, Qabila Quraid. One was Kabila Kalb, the maternal uncle specifically of Sufiani, put him under intense pressure. Sufiani, what are you doing? You were speaking from a position of power. The whole of Sham was under your control. You've got a huge army with you. You've got so much power. You go to Medina and you succumb to this man who claims himself to be, to be the Mahdi. You have brought disrepute to our family. You have brought disrepute to our clan. You have, broke, you have shattered the honor of Abu Sufyan's family. Hearing and coming under the pressure, succumbing to the pressure of his maternal uncles and his commanders, from there Sufiani writes to the Imam that I'm backtracking from my bayat, I'm reneging my bayat. We will still go into the final confrontation. And then the final confrontation takes place between the Imam and Sufiani. Eventually, the Sufiani has to die, and he does die at the hands of the 12th Imam, the end of the chapter, 15 months of intense persecution. But 15 months of rule that changed the entire scenario of the world at that time, bringing it to a force that caused God to bring forth the 12th Imam. Over here, as we are at this point, three signs out of the five signs have been completed. We need to discuss two more signs. Two more signs that have been mentioned as five signs. La Buddha min qabl zuhur al-zuhur al-qa'im Before the arrival of the 12th Imam. It was somewhere around this point that I will mention this point, this sign that would manifest itself before the arrival of the 12th Imam. A sign that would indicate that yes, now the 12th Imam has come. You do realize in this entire progress of sequence, and the series of lectures we are slowly going by these are those signs that we said would be consisting of those those signs this group consists of those signs that indicate as soon as these signs come within the next year or within the next few months or within the next few days imam is coming and this is the sign out of five which was said min al mahtum three have been done but here, after I mention this point, I'm going to give a brief recap because right now we've been discussing in, in bits and pieces something would happen here, something would happen here, something would happen here. People tend to get lost. I will take another five, seven minutes once I've explained this point to link up the entire scenario right from the time. <coughs> Right from the time of the rising of Sufiani till the time of the Dhuhr of Imam, uh, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, Ajjalallah ta'ala faradhu sharif. Over here, when it comes, one of the signs that have been mentioned, Minal Mahtum, definitely will take place is something that is of a divine nature, something that is divinely ordained. Why do I say that? Because this event that is going to take place, which event, the reappearance of the 12th Imam, is go not going to be an ordinary event. It is an event that is going to cause an entire upheaval in the entire universe, because with the arrival of this man, with the arrival of this personality, the entire world is going to, observe, to, is going to experience a change Ma dhulmat dhulman wa jawra What was filled with dhulm and jawr and persecution and tyranny And fill it up with adl and justice This point 
is one of those that has definitely been stated. Now, if such an important action has to be taken and is going to take place, certain actions need to be divinely ordained it cannot be done normally it has to be done out of normal it has to be done divinely so that it passes a message to the people divine intervention for a divine cause for the welcoming of a divine guide not an ordinary instance not an ordinary event what is this it is said in the traditions one of the things that will take place is very close to the arrival of the 12th Imam linking up simultaneous contemporaneous to the arrival to the Zuhur of the 12th Imam is from the skies a sound a shout a voice will be heard tradition says close to the arrival contemporaneous to the arrival Hadrat Jibreel will call out from the skies but there are certain aspects that we need to understand. The tradition says it's going to be a voice coming out from the skies. I repeat, sounds coming out from the skies. I'm not over here to interpret what these means. Neither am I here to give you an explanation of how this is going to take place. We don't know how this would take place. We can only conjecture, we can only surmise, we can only take a guess because we don't know when it is coming first. Secondly, it could be another after thousands of years and from now till those thousands of years technological advancements would be so much that to, to conjecture, to guess how this would take place would be nothing less than futile if not foolish. But listen to what will happen. The tradition says 23rd of the month of Ramadan. Notice these dates because immediately once I finish this point, I'm going to link up the sequence events that take place. 23rd of the month of Ramadan. Tradition says a voice will be heard from the skies. Tradition says this will be the voice of Hadrat Jibreel alayhi salam. The voice that would come, the voice that would be the that would be heard by everybody is not a sound this has specifically been emphasized it is not a sound like a clap of a thunder it is not a sound like the explosion of a bomb or a missile it's going to be a voice it's going to be a speech it's going to be a sentence people will hear it tradition says everybody will hear it in the entire world everybody will hear it not just everybody would hear it everybody would hear it in their own languages Yunadi tradition says Yunadi Munadin Fil Avvalin Nahar in the early part of the night in the early part of the day a voice will be heard from the skies yasma'u kullu qawmin bi alsinatihim every qawm every tribe every community every nation will hear this in their own voices a sound will emanate from the skies everybody will hear it every single individual traditions emphasize everybody will hear it and everybody will hear it in their own languages it would not be something that would come out in arabic and we would say we don't know arabic or it would be in english and non-english speaking countries would say we don't understand everybody would hear it there are so many possibilities that can take place even now we see one of the possibilities People might come and ask, how is it possible a voice, a sound, a speech stated in the skies reaches the entire world? I don't know how it would take place. One possible guess would be the sound might come, the speech might come, and the media, world global media, would within minutes transfer it to every country. Again, the fact that if a certain speech in a certain language is given out, it is not an improbable task. It is not an improbable thing that people do, do not understand understand that language might not understand that speech because even today in the United Nations where there are these various countries with various mother tongues and various national languages you still find them somebody speaking in English and there are certain countries who do not profess to the English language they use those direct real-time translating devices that translate word for word there are so many possibilities this is not the opportunity this is not the time it is not correct to interpret we don't know it's coming now it's coming after a thousand years between now and a thousand years what technological advancements takes place we do not know so to sit over here in 2013 trying to interpret this is not correct what we need to understand is that this voice will come now this voice would come, everybody would hear, tradition says, يَسْمَعُ كُلُّ قَوْمٍ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ They would hear the sounds, they would hear this voice, they would hear the speech in their own language. But the, 
the manner, the characteristic of it would be so much. The tradition says when the speech is heard, when this voice comes out, it will come out as such a shock, it will come out as such a surprise, it will instill so much fear into the hearts of the people, whoever listens, everyone who listens, everyone will listen. At that time tradition says those who would be sleeping will get up. Those who would be inside the houses would rush out of fear outside their houses. These are the words of the tradition. It would really make an impact. So nobody would say it is something that is a normal phenomena. It is something that is an ordinary phenomena. Somebody is shouting outside the house. Somebody shouts outside the house. Nobody gets up in fright out of one's sleep. But tradition says the impact would be such. People would be jolted into listening. Everybody would listen. Every person on this planet would listen and every person on this planet would understand it in their own language. It is logical and it is rational. This, this has to take place because everybody needs to be informed about this event that is taking place and what would this event be? What would this voice come out? Hadrat Jibreel would come out in speech indicating the reappearance of the 12th Imam. The time in the month of Ramadan. Remember I had spoken to you two nights earlier. There is a difference between Dhuhr and there is a difference between Qiyam. There is a difference between reappearance and there is a difference between commencement of mission. In the month of Ramadan, the Imam will reappear. What you and me from the time have been hearing that he will rise up and he will he will start his he, and he will appear from the from near the house of God in the near the Kaaba in Masjid al Haram. That is not the Zuhur. That is not the reappearance. The reappearance takes place in the month of Rajab. The Zuhur will take place in the month of Rajab. The Qiyam and the mission, the commencement of the mission of the twelfth Imam. I'm not sure if I will get the time and reach there, but the commencement of the mission of the twelfth Imam will take free from Masjid al-Haram near the Kaaba. Again, there is a philosophy, there is a there is an objective, there is a reason why he would start from the Khan Kaaba and that we will come to that. But in the month of Ramadan, 23rd of the month of Ramadan, you will find that this voice from the skies, Hadrat Jibreel, is announcing. At that time he will announce, he will speak out. What will he speak out? Traditions would say, Ya Ibadallah, Isma'u ma aqul. O people of the world, O creation of God, listen to what I am saying. In al Mahdi min ale Muhammad kharij. Understand the Mahdi from the Ahlul Bayt. Tradition says he will speak out the name of Imam with the name of his father, Muhammad ibn al Hassan al Askari. Salwatullahi wa salamu The tradition says he will come out and as soon as he will say one of the first sentences he would occur, he would say, Ya Ibadallah, Isma'i ma aqul. But tradition says before he addresses the people, he would come out with one sentence. One sentence is what? The verse. Which verse? That same, that same verse that I mentioned when we were talking about the wali in the second lecture, Ja al haq was the haq al batil. That means Hadrat Jibreel when he calls out from the skies the first sentence he will announce it Ja al Haq the truth has come the Haq has come was Zahaq al Batil falsehood is going to vanish in al Batila Kana Zahuqa and falsehood is bound to be vanquished. Then he will say Ya Ibadullah O the servants of God Isma'u ma aqul listen to what I am saying in al Mahdi Min Ali Muhammad Kharij. The the Mahdi from the Ali Muhammad has now reappeared. Then he would say, In Al Hakka fi Aliyin wa Shiati. He will announce this voice would be heard that the Haq lies with Ali and his Shias. But here at this point of time, at here in this instance, I want to make a little correction. Correction, intentional mistake that I did. And this is where I want to make a correction. The mistake I had done was an intentional mistake. 
all along I have been saying that there will be a sound, there will be a voice that would be heard. No, there will not be one voice. There will be two voices that will come on the same day in the month of Ramadan. According to certain traditions, 23rd of the month of Ramadan, not just one voice of Jibrail. Jibrail's voice will definitely be there. But after that, a few hours later, another voice will be heard. Tradition from the sixth Imam says, La Buddha min hadaini sautaini qabla khurujil qa'im. Before the reappearance of the Imam, there will be two sounds. La Buddha min hadaini sautain. La Buddha means surely, definitely, has to occur. Then he goes on to explain, Sautim min as sama. There will be one sound coming from the skies. Wahawa saut jibra'il. It is the south, it is the voice of Jibra'il. He will take the name of the Imam along with his father, Hujjat ibn al Hasan al Askari, has arrived. He has done the duhur. Then Imam says, The second voice was Sautum min al Ard. Another sound will come out from the earth. Another sound will come out from the planet. Sing, whose sound is this? Was Sautum min al Ard, was Sautu Iblis al Lain. Immediately, when Hadrat Jibra'il comes out and says the Ja al Haq was the Haq al Batil, the Mahdi has come, come to him. He is the Mahdi from Ali Muhammad. Haq is with Ali and his Shiites. Within a few hours, tradition says a sound, a voice will come from the earth trying to oppose that sound. That is the work of Iblis, that is the work of Shaitan to put people into confusion. Tradition says, just as Hadrat Jibreel says, in al haqqa fi aliyin wa within a few hours, Iblis will come, a sound will come, a voice will come from the earth, and he would say, Allah ya ibad Allah, O people of Allah, O creation of Allah, in al haqqa now tradition mentioned two names, in al haqqa fi sufiyani, Another tradition says, in al haqqa fi Uthman. There is no contradiction because if you remember, when we were talking about Sufyani, we had said his name would be Uthman. Iblis would come, and this is the tradition of the fifth and the sixth Imam, La Buddha Min Sautain. It is imperative that these two sounds come one, the divine guidance, one, the divine notification. Second is a confusing sound, the confusing voice indicating that it is not Ali who is on the right path, it is Sufyani on the right path, and it is his followers who are on the right path. You remember, you understand, this is going at the time when Sufyani has risen, that he is now the the superpower over there the imam is coming so in order to guide in order to beguile people seeking the truth what is the most important to bring a battle in our first lecture when we were talking about haq and batil till for so long as haq is not there batil cannot come till for so long as light is not there shadow cannot come till for so long as water is not there surf cannot come it the reality is haq batil is a subsidiary the reality is light shadow is a subsidiary the reality is water surf is a subsidiary it's bound to go away till the time Hadr Jibra'il did not announce the arrival of the 12th Imam. Iblis was staying calm, but his work is to confuse the people. As soon as the arrival of the 12th Imam is ordained, Iblis comes, and then the tradition says, as soon as Wa'indadalika, as soon as Iblis comes out with his speech, Iblis comes out with his word, Allah wa inna al haqqa fi sufiyani wa shi'atihi. Irtabal mubtilun. People will get confused whom to follow, whom not to follow, what to do. And then somebody asked the fifth Imam, which is the fifth Imam is explaining, this is the fifth Imam's hadith when he's talking about these two signs. Somebody comes to the fifth while this talk is going on and the Imam is explaining. This person asks the Imam, but if there are going to be two signs, if there are going to be two sounds, if there are going to be two voices, if there are going to be two contradictory statements, whom do we follow? At the time the Imam says, pay attention, on the month of Ramadan, the first sound is the sound of Haq. When you hear the first sound, remember that is the sound of Haq, that is the sound of truth. And it is at this point that the Zuhur of the Imam in the month of Rajab takes place, in the month of Shaaba, in the month of Ramadan takes place. Now over here, there is another point that is remaining, that is another sign that is remaining, the fifth sign. But in order to explain that fifth sign, I want to take you to a small little journey 
just to link up the pieces so that you know exactly what is happening pay careful attention bear with me for five or seven minutes and you will see how the entire scenario is unfurling the scenario begins in the month of Rajab when Sufyani stands up in Damash outside Damash there he has a war with Abqa and Ashab he brings them down he defeats them takes control of Damascus this is how the unfurling will take place he will defeat he will take over Damascus once he takes over Damascus he will start his war he will start his expansion policies within a short time the entire Sham comes under his control Sham means Syria Sham means Syria plus Lebanon Sham means Syria Lebanon and Jordan Sham means Syria Lebanon Jordan and Palestine this whole region comes under his we're talking about the old Sham these regions come under his control it is at this point Rajab he started Rajab he started his mission now having taken over Sham he wants to expand he wants to embark on Futuhat Futuhat means expansion policies so he targets Iraq he enters into Iraq you heard the battle of Kirkisa more than a hundred thousand people killed and then he targets Kufa Kufa will play a very important role as I told you but at that time the army enters into Kufa tradition reports they will attack Kufa on the day of Eid al-Fitr that is the first of Shawwal. Shah Rajab, he is taken up. He started his campaign. He's taken over Damascus and Syria. Now he launches attack into Kufa. Kufa, the attack was launched on the first of Shawwal, on the day of Eid al-Fitr. This is Rajab. This is Shawwal. As this is going on, as this is going on, before the month of Shawwal comes the month of Ramadan, 23rd of the month of Ramadan, Imam Dad Dhuhr in Medina. Allah, Ya Ibad Allah, the Hadrat Jibreel shouts out, calls out, your Imam has reappeared in Medina. At that point of time, the army of Sufyani have already entered into Kufa. On the 23rd, the reappearance sound comes. First of Shawwal, they attack Kufa because they were not aware of the instructions for Sufyani. But Sufyani now is strategizing. As soon as they attack Kufa, and he comes to know in the 23rd of the month of Ramadan that this man has reappeared, he gives instructions to that army, go follow this man in Medina, because in Medina this man has reappeared. That army comes out of Kufa. We spoke about it. Prisoners in the form of ladies, as they come across, as they are about to come out of Kufa, that group from Khorasan comes under the leadership of Khorasani. The other group comes under the leadership of Yamani. Yamani and Khorasani meet on the outskirts of Kufa when they realize that this army has massacred people in Kufa and are now moving towards the first army that was placed in the place called Farooq. They follow him, they decimate them, that, that army. The ladies are freed, brought back to Kufa. But their Sufyani then realizes that this army is decimated. So he tells that army that is stationed in Farooq, a portion of you now go to Medina because the Imam is there. The main basin, the main bastion stays there. A group moves towards Medina. When they enter Medina, we have heard Allah commands the Imam Ali, uh, commands Imam Mahdi to move from Medina to Makkah because now is still not the time for the khuruj now is still not the time to start the commencement of his mission imam moves from medina to makkah this group goes to medina and realizes imam is not there they turn to sufiani what do i do what do we do sufiani says go follow imam in medina in makkah so from medina this group goes towards makkah as they are between medina and makkah as they are between medina and makkah the earth swallows this army at that point of time imam is in medina imam is in makkah the army has been killed now at this point of time Imam comes back again to Medina it comes back again to Medina and stations there it is at this point of time that now the Zuhur has taken place announcement has been done that the Mahdi from Ali Muhammad has now reappeared but he still not commenced his mission up to now the 313 there is no mention because he's not launched his mission he's only appeared he's strategizing he comes back to Medina when he comes to Medina he has has a few people whom he trusts these are still not we are not talking about the 313 these people could be part of the 313 but at that point the fifth sign now manifests itself it is very close on to the threshold of the arrival of the 12th Imam in the form of commencement of his mission of global reformation with peace and equality there in Medina he sends a person a young man a youth a youth but a person of immense piety, a person of immense taqwa, a person of immense righteousness. He says, go to, 
He says the name tradition says Muhammad ibn Hassan. He says Muhammad ibn Hassan, go to Makkah. The people of Makkah are still not ready to accept me. Go there and try to convince them that I have arrived very shortly. I am coming. They need to support me. Muhammad ibn Hassan moves from Medina to Makkah, goes into Masjid al Haram. In Makkah, Masjid al Haram plays a very central role, just as in Medina, the mosque of the Prophet plays a central role. This person will go into Makkah, go into the Masjid al-Haram and make an announcement that very shortly the Zuhur has taken place but very shortly the Imam is going to start his mission. He needs your help. He needs him. He needs you. He is from the family of the Ahlul Bayt. Tradition says this boy, young boy, very pious, clean hearted, very religious, very righteous, very muttaqi is now between the Rukun and the Maqam is killed by the enemies of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. This, the tradition says, is the fifth sign, the qatlun nafs zakiya. This boy, because he was young, this boy, because he was pious, this boy, because he was righteous, has been referred into the tradition as a nafsu zakiya, a pure soul, a pak soul, a zaki soul, nafsu zakiya. Tradition says, as soon as this happens, understand, understand within 15 days, bayna qiyam al qa'im. وَقَتْلِ النَّفْسِ الزَّكِيَّةِ خَمْسَةَ عَشْرَ لَيْلًا Tradition says 15 days from the killing of this man, the order from Allah will come for Hadrat Imam Ali, Imam Mahdi to come to Makkah and announce his reappearance. No, not the reappearance, the commencement of his mission. So you see what happens? In, in, in first of Shawwal, Kufa is attacked. After Kufa is attacked, Imam comes in the month of uh, Shaba, in the month of Ramadan, announcement has been done. In when this qatl nafs has come and the person is killed, nafs, uh, nafsu zakiya, tradition says, 15 days before the arrival, before the commencement of the qiyam, this person is killed. And because of this, ulama and the traditions also mention the date, five days from Zil Hijjah. Five days, end of Zil Hijjah, this person will be killed in Masjid al Zil Qaada. Zil Hijjah will be killed because, according to the traditions, Imam will commence his mission from Khan Kaaba on the 10th of Muharram, which would be a Friday on an odd numbered year. 15 days before this person is killed, and hence the tradition says, five days remaining from the end of Dil Hijjah, this person gets killed, five days of Dil Hijjah, 10 days of Muharram, 15 days, بَيْنَ قِيَامِ الْقَائِمِ وَقَتْلِ النَّفْسِ الزَّكِيَّةِ خَمْسَةَ عَشْرَ لَيْلًا 15 days, 15 nights, and then Imam moves to Makkah upon the orders of God, and then the day of Ashura comes, when Imam openly and officially launches his mission for cleansing the world of pollution and inequality and replacing it with adalat and, pers and, and, and elimination of persecution. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Now, in order to understand, and I am sure I will not reach that point, but when the Imam comes, there are certain things that we need to know about him. And these are things that that the Imams when okay let me just move forward till I reach that point otherwise it will not become clear when the Imam comes there are certain physical traits that we need to know about him and this fact becomes very important because of a certain alert and a certain caution given to us by the sixth Imam and an explanation given by the eighth Imam Ali ibn Musa ar rada alayhi salatu wassalam Tradition says when Imam will come, he will be coming in the form of a young man, approximately 40, but min do nehi, less than 40. He will appear to be a person with an age of 40 or less than 40, but his build would be kind of a build of a 20 year old youth, broad forehead, large biceps. On his right cheek, there will be a small black mole, and a person who looks very young. When this is being mentioned, the sixth Imam says, Have you heard these signs that I have told you? A person around 40 years of age, the body of a youth of 20 years, strong, big biceps, thick neck, as if he is a person well built. But despite thousands of years, he will appear as a 40 year. 
or min dunihi less than 40 then the sixth imam Abu abdillah imam sadiq alayhi salam narrates and says law qam al qaim when the twelfth imam will rise understand la ankarahu nas people will reject him when the twelfth imam comes the people will reject him when the twelfth imam comes people will say you're not the imam when the twelfth imam comes ankarahu nas people will do inkar so the, the, the Ashab says, but why, why would they, they've been waiting, they are the ones who've been calling Allahumma hajjil le bali yikal faraj, why would they reject? He's saying, وَهُوْ لِأَنَّهُ إِذَا يَرْجَعَ إِلَيْهِمْ يَرْجَعَ شَابًا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَهُ شَيْخًا kabira. The reason that they will reject him is that when he comes to them, he will come as a youth in its prime, 35, 37, 40, with a good build. Whereas they are expecting him that he is coming, if he were to come now, 1200 years. If he were to come after another 1000 years, 2000 years. وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَهُ شَيْخًا kabira. They are expecting him to be an old man. They are expecting him to be having big white beard. They are expecting him to have his eyebrows turned white. But he will not come with those characteristics. Despite thousands of years, the effects of age will not be affecting him. Laws of nature of human mortality will not affect him. Laws of physics and chemistry do not touch him. And this is exactly the same thing that the eighth Imam, Ali ibn Musa Rada alayhi salatu, was salam mentions a saying wa alamatuhu an yakuna shaykhu sin when he comes his age will be a, 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 an old age wa shabul mandar but his sight when you look at him he looks to be a youthful person he looks to be a strong person not bound by age not affected by age inna nadra ilayhi la yahsabahu ibn arba'ina sana somebody who looks at him and says can you guess his age he will say around 40 wa min dunihi less than 40 eighth imam is saying then he says you know one of the signs of this man is that for the entire period that he will be alive let alone if he comes after thousands of years but the amount of time that he will live he has one characteristic Allah has protected him from all mortal effects of nature and physics that the others are being subjected to the eighth imam is saying wa inna min alamatihi and one of the signs of the reality and the truthfulness of this man is annahu la yahramu bi murur al ayyam wal layali hatta ya'ti ajluhu with the passing of time even after he reappears you will not see signs of old age on him you will not see signs of senility in him you will not see signs of weakness so however long that he has taken to reappear he will still appear young and even after appearing however long he will remain signs of old age will not affect him till what time 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, 100 years, hatta ya'ati ajalahu. Till the time he is dying, he will be appeared to be a youthful person around the age of 40, despite having come after thousands of years. Now, it is at this point that we need to understand one thing. It is at this point that we need to understand a difference. There was one difference that I mentioned last time. There's another difference that I want to mention here. The last time the difference that I mentioned and explained was the concept of Qiyam and, and Dhuhr, the reappearance and the launch of a mission. We've heard, we've understood reappearance in the month of Ramadan, the Qiyam and commencement of the mission in the day in the month of Muharram. There the 23rd of the month of Ramadan, the world is informed, this man has arrived. On the 10th of Muharram, he announces himself, I'm officially launching my campaign. Two different things. Similarly, there are two other terminologies that we need to discuss. We will be reaching this sometime next, uh, uh, in the next lecture. What is that? There are two terms that are related to the companions and the helpers and the assistants and those who are giving cooperation to the 12th Imam. One term is Ashab. So you will refer to the traditions. Many times you will come across the word Ashab. Many times you will come with the word Ansar. Now if you remember 
Ansar was a specific terminology that was used for the people in the time of the Holy Prophet. The Muhajirin and the Ansar. The Muhajirun were the people who moved from Mecca to Medina along with the Holy Prophet or after the Holy Prophet. And Ansar were the people who remained in Medina, who were there in Medina when the Prophet moved from Mecca to Medina. Those helpers who were stationed in Medina were called Ansar. Those who moved from Mecca to Medina together with the Holy Prophet either along with him or after him but joining him in his mission are called Muhajirun. Over here with the 12th Imam you have another two terminologies. One is the term Ashab, one is the term Ansar. Both these terms refer to different categories of people and you will find this very clearly when you look at the traditions of the 12th uh, regarding the 12th Imam that that the Imams mention. At times they use the word Ashab, at times they use the word Ansar. Ashab refers to a different category. Ansar refers to a different category. Ashab refers to those individuals that you and me have so often discussed, the 313 people. How they will come? We will talk. How they will gather? We will talk. Who are these people? We will not talk. Because there is a list. There are things. If you want, I can give you the names. Names of people together with their father's name, together with the regions that they are coming. 313 list is there. Said by whom? By none other than your and mine first Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wassalam. The Ansar, the Ashab refers to this 313. It's a very dramatic story as to how these people would come. But it is nothing to be so fanciful about. Because these people were of that caliber that demands Allah for him to bring them to the assistance of his final hujjah to fulfill the prophecy that he's made into the Quran. As for Ansar, Ansar refers to those individuals. Ansar refers to those people who will not be of the 313. They will not be of the 313. They will be belonging to some... They will not be part of the 313. But after the 313 Ashab come, pledge by Ad, show their cooperation and extend their support to the 12th Imam. Then slowly, slowly, the other people would gather. Probably you and me would be, inshallah, part of that group. These people who join afterwards are referred to in the tradition as Ansar. And the other ones who come in the very beginning are referred to as the Ashab. Now over here, with the very few minutes remaining, because tonight we have to talk about, about Abbas, but when the Imam is now coming out and expressing his opinion, expressing the manifestation and the commencement of his campaign, tradition says he will move from Medina. Remember, he has already sent his emissary. He has already sent that nafs zakiya Muhammad ibn Hassan to, Mac to Makkah to gather support, but he is killed. Very similar Remember, I had told you there are a lot of similarities between the twelfth Imam and the third Imam. Do you not see a different? Do you not see a similarity there? Before moving to Kufa and Karbala, Hussein sent Muslim ibn Aqil. Muslim ibn Aqil is killed. Here, the twelfth Imam sends his emissary, Nafs Zakiya. Nafs Zakiya is killed. Very intricate relationship. Very intricate relationship and a, and, a, and a companionship between the lifestyles of the third imam and the twelfth imam as we go further probably a couple of these further uh, intricate relationship i will just mention in passing but right now after nafs zakiya is killed in makkah imam uh, imam mahdi moves from madina goes to makkah 10th of ashura 10th of muharram on the day of ashura on the day of friday in an odd numbered year according to certain traditions According to certain traditions, they say he will emerge, he will start his mission in an odd numbered year. But yeah, we are just mentioning this. Eventually, the final decision rise, lies in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've already discussed this before. But now when he comes with these characteristics, he will start and the tradition says that I see inni andur. I'm watching the masoom is saying, the imam is saying, I'm watching this crime from our family entering into Masjid al-Haram, leaning back against the wall of the Kaaba and then making making his announcement. It is at that time that when he enters into Masjid al-Haram, seats or stands and puts his back onto the door wall of the Kaaba, between the Rukn and the Maqam he is facing, at that time he will start off with his first speech, the first khutbah. This first khutbah is an extremely important khutbah because this is the first time that the world will be listening from the mouth the words of Imam Masum, which they have not been able to hear for centuries 
years, for millenniums. There he would stand up and then he would start his speech. But today is not the occasion for the speech. Just one point that I want to mention and then I will go back to the Masaib because that is where we want to lead to. The moment he comes, this entire khutbah of his is an amazing khutbah because from the very beginning he puts forth certain parameters. You heard from in several lectures earlier that we had stated they will be on several fronts that people would oppose the 12th Imam. At times they would say, your behavior is unlike the behavior of your fathers. You cannot be the Imam. At times they would say, you are talking about things that our forefathers never heard. You cannot be the Imam. At times they would say, your age belies or your demeanor, your attitude and your physical appearance belies the age that you are in. You cannot be the Imam. You are an imposter. So a lot of people based on various parameters will start moving aside, will start opposing the Imam and here it comes the problem. Here comes the important thing that the sixth Imam and the fifth Imam have informed us. People, when the Imams would talk about the twelfth Imam, these people would say if there are so many people from amongst the Mu'minin who will oppose the 12th Imam? How do we save ourselves? How do we understand who is right? How do we make sure that we don't oppose him? There was one thing, one criteria that the Imam would say and that criteria was it is imperative for you to know about this 12th person and once you know share out this knowledge with the others till somebody does not know this he's going to oppose somebody comes and says i've been living for two thousand years but i'm still 40 years young i look like 40. obviously i'm going to turn him aside i'm going to say you're fibbing you're lying unless i know from beforehand that this man is supposed to be this way that despite years he has not been affected neither by salinity nor by old age nor by any laws of physics and chemistry of nature that others are subjected to so one of the things that is important is for you and me if we need to be part of this revelation, this revolution, if we need to be part of this, is to understand and gain the ma'rifat of this man. And once we get it, it is imperative for us. The fifth Imam is saying, the sixth Imam is saying, once you get information, share it out so that your brothers know what is happening, so that when he comes, they don't fall into that group who stands against the Imam. Don't if they stand up against the Imam. Somebody stands against the Imam, it's Humfi Khaledun. He's going to pass away into the fires of hell. You can't stand up against that last hujjah. You can't stand up. But in order to do that, but in order to reach that, again, questions were asked. What were those characteristics of, this, of these companions? I will not go into that. I make passing references. All this have been discussed in my previous two ashras. It can be referred over there. Here we're talking about the signs. But these are the signs that when he will come, and the signs that we need to know so that we can be part of him and not take these things when we see them as out of the ordinary as pack of lies and reject the real hujjat of God but tonight the 8th of, of Muharram I want to ask you a serious question from the time that the end of Zil Hijjah was coming and we are all preparing these black cloths are put up and people make preparations for the Madlis Aza we all wait for Ashura that's our Gayatul Quswa with the start of Muharram. We're not bothered about first, second and third. That has become part of the routine. But our aim is Ashura. Our aim is the day of Ashura. But before Ashura, everybody waits for one particular day. The 8th of Muharram. Hadrat Abu Al-Fadl Al-Abbas. God knows what is there in this personality. God knows what is there in this personality and you and me know it. You and me see it. You and me perceive it. There are certain things that I am not degrading or debasing the Imams. But unfortunately it is, it is something that it is very visible. A shortcoming from our side and the Fadilat of Abbas. What is that? How many times have we seen the wuladat or shahadat of imams that na'udhu billah incorrectly people say anani wala wafat che amoti wafat che this is a big wafat this is a small wafat so imam ali's wafat 21st is a big wafat but imam ali and naqi's wafat nani wafat che you'll find hardly a few people i see it because we experience it wherever we go a shortcoming a zulm that we do upon the ahlul bayt but leave that aside one personality wherever you go wherever you go is always the darling of the eyes is Hadrat Abu Fadl al-Abbas 
people make it the point that entire schedule for Muharram revolves around first the eighth of Muharram, then Ashura. You see how many cars are outside? Why? Because Abul Fadl al -Abba. Something has been given to him. There's an attraction. Probably that loyalty that he had for Hussein is now seeking us to be loyal to this personality. This is what happens. Tradition says, if you fear God and if you love God and you do things for God, then God will instill the love of you into the hearts of the people. This is what pulls it to Abbas. But Abbas's personality in Karbala manifested later. His personality while he is still alive is just born. That is the time his personality actually started. And you know that incident, right? Umul Banin delivers Abbas. <laughs> Ali is in Masjid al Nabi, gets the information. Umul Banin has delivered a child. This is the prophecy. He knew it was Abbas. So he comes quickly. He goes to the bed, and what does he see? It's ulama state this, huh? the, rivayat, the, the, the incident. What does he see? A small child lying next to Umul Banin. But as he looks at the face of Umul Banin, she's worried, she's sad, she's forlorn, she looks worried. Say in Arab, a child is born, that to a male, that to, to Ali. As a husband, Umul Banin dejected, sad, why? What is wrong Umul Banin? The name Umul Banin came afterwards, but we're just understanding the personality. He's saying, Oh Imam, this child since the time he has been born has not opened his eyes. He just doesn't open his eyes. It's been some time since the time he was born and since the time you've come. All along he's not opened his eyes. <laughs> Ali listens. He is reminded of an incident about himself. You know what happened when Ali was born in the Kaaba? When Ali was born for three days, Fatima bint Asad had Ali with him. He didn't open his eyes. When did he open his eyes? When the Kaaba split again to take out Fatima bint Asad and the Prophet was there. Prophet says to Fatima bin Tasar, don't worry, this child has not opened his eyes, give him to me. As soon as, uh, as soon as the Holy Prophet takes Ali, for three days this child has not opened his eyes to see his mother. As soon as the Prophet takes him, he opens his eyes. The first person Ali sees is the face of the Holy Prophet. He is reminded of this, who Imam Ali, with respect to whom Abbas. He is saying, don't worry, I know. This is part of our family lineage and part of our family mirath. Say, give me the child. The child comes. Child still doesn't open the eyes. He looks around. Sing, Aina Hussain. Where is Hussain? Call Hussain. Hussain was outside. He is called. Say, Baba, you called me. He's saying, Hussain, yes, I have called you. He's saying, how can I help you? He's saying, no, I don't want you to help you. I want to give you your small brother. I want to give you your small brother. Hussein says, who? Ali says, this one. As soon as Ali takes Abbas and puts it into the hands of Hussein, this child up to now, even in Ali's hands, who had not opened his eyes, as soon as he comes into Hussein's hands, opens his eyes, the first person Abbas sees Hussein ibn Ali. Keep this in mind. Huh? This will help out of the last time when Abbas is dying. So Hussein asks, looks at him, eyes open, umul banin happy, a sense of euphoria, exhilaration in the family. At that time, Hussein asks, what is the name of this child? He's saying his name has been prophesied to be Abbas. While the stalk is there, Zainab tradition says, Zainab is watching. She says, Baba, is this the child whose name is Abbas? So Ali says, yes. So Hussein, so Zainab says, can I have that child? Hussein gives the child to Zainab. Zainab bends down and starts talking to the child. Ali says, Zainab, what are you talking to the small child? He's saying, no, I'm not talking anything to the child. I'm just conveying a message. He's saying, what message can you convey to a child who's just born? He's saying, you don't know, Baba. But the night when my mother Fatima to Zahra was about to die and she was on her deathbed, before she died, she called me, Zainab, my daughter, come here. I'm leaving from this world. But several years later, there will be a brother of yours that would be coming. He is going to be my son. When you hold him for the first time, say, Fatima to Zahra has sent us Salams. This is Abbas, a personality who Fatima to Zahra sends her salams. This is that personality. Fatima is going from the world, says, Tell Abbas my salam because I will not be there. What else do you want? Abbas grows up, grows up, events unfold. His loyalty to Imam Hussein alayhi salam becomes a part of history.
becomes a tradition amongst the Arab. Time passes till you reach a point on the night of Ashura. The night of Ashura, I have repeated, I have said once, but this is a different context. Who sends switches of the light? Go away, those who want you to go. Who wants to go? Those who want to go, go away. Nobody goes. Again, he switches on, off the light. Nobody goes. When the light comes on, somebody comes up and says, But without you, Hussein, where can we go? Who was this? Abu al Abbas. It is after Abbas spoke, then the others started to speak. Oh, Hussein, we cannot leave you. Oh, Hussein, you are our master in this world and the hereafter. First person to express his loyalty, Abbas ibn Amir al Mu'manin. Time passes. The night of Ashura gone, the day of Ashura. Since morning, from the time the Bani Hashim begin to go, Abbas keeps coming to Hussain. Hussain, Aka, let me go. Sayyidi, let me go. Whenever he would ask, Hussain would look at him. He says, no, Abbas, you cannot go. Aka, let me go. Abbas, you cannot go. And the reason he would give was that you are the commander of my army. You are the standard bearer of my army. Till a time reaches that now when Abbas comes, everybody is gone. Huh? Now he says, at least now let me go, Aka. But Hussain says, you cannot go because you are the, the commander of my army. He says, Aka, there is no army remaining. There is no army remaining except you, me and Asghar. Hussain says, no, Abbas, I cannot let you go. I cannot let you go. Dejected, Abbas comes out. As he comes out from one of the tents, small little Satina comes running out, holds the diamond, holds the red of Abbas and says, Chacha, I am hearing so many things from my friends. They say, your Chacha is Abbas. Can he not get for us some water? Chacha, get me some water. As soon as he hears this, he realizes, this is the opportunity he is waiting. He holds Sakina's hands, goes into the tent of Hussein. Hussein is in the tent. As soon as the flap lifts and he sees Abbas in his hand, Sakina, he realizes before Abbas could say anything, he says, Abbas, I know what you have done. I know what you want to do. You want to use Sakina to get my permission. Then Hussein turns to Sakina and says, you want to recommend my, your Chacha Abbas to go to the battlefield? I will not stop. Your thirst, I will not stop. But remember, Sakina, now you have come to recommend your father to go to the battlefield in a short time a time will come when you will be pleading oh Allah I do not want the water I want my chacha Abbas after that don't complain to me that you are missing your chacha Abbas goes Abbas sits on the horse goes in a majestic fashion tears through the army reaches Farad reaches Euphrates bends down takes his water skin pulls pits the water inside fills it up picks up water in his hand brings it to his mouth as if wanting to drink it and then hits it onto the water again drops the water doesn't drink there are so many interpretations why Abbas could have done but there is one thing that has come again there is one incident that took place that when Abbas took it out he was reminded of that incident when was this? this was the time on the eve of the 21st of the month of Ramadan when Ali was about to go away from the world when Ali was about to be martyred at that time he calls everybody the procedures were done I don't want to go into that finally he calls Abbas he says, Abbas come here I want to talk to you Abbas comes near he says Hassan go back Hussein go back this is my talk with Abbas Abbas comes he said, Abbas bend down. Abbas bends down. He said, put your ears towards my mouth. Abbas bends down. Wow. Ali says, this is my wasiyah to you, Abbas. This is your father doing a wasiyah to you. Ita kana yomu ashura. When the day of Ashura comes and you take control over the water in Furat, do not drink the water of Furat while Hussein is thirsty. The Wali of Khuda is thirsty. You will not drink the water. When Abbas puts up the water, he is reminded of it. He hits it down and says, Oh Ali, oh Baba, this is the fulfillment of the Wasiya that you have done for me. Hussein is thirsty Sakina is thirsty Abbas cannot drink the water Abbas cannot drink the water the sheepskin, the mush the water bag filled when now he's turning back 
but between going and between coming back there is lies a huge of a difference when hussein's commander was going towards the furat his only aim was battle i have to break this rank to reach furat but now when he gets the water and he's now returning to the khaima and the tents battle is not on his mind on his mind is the fact i have to save this water for satina so now when he turns he is not fighting he is not fighting people realize this change when he came he came like a flash of lightning sword dangling into the air now that is not the case he is moving towards the tent one shaqi comes hits him on his right hand the right hand gets severed near the tent near the tent sakina is watching but she can't see abbas she can only see the alam of abbas as the hand gets severed the abba the alam tilts to one side Sakina was perplexed. Sakina worried. Raises her hands into the sky. Oh Allah, take care of my chacha. Take care of my chacha. Because of me, he has gone for the water. Abbas moves forward. A second blow. The left hand gets severed. The alam moves to the left side. Sakina is shocked, but slowly the alam rises. One of the shaki sees. He sees both hands severed. Now alam is between these cut hands that he's holding. holding and his body is lying on to the water skin he is saying he is narrating i don't know people would come arrows would come swords would be hit but abbas would not come down from the horse i was worried i was concerned what is that power that is there in abbas that so many arrows so many swords so many hits of the sword and abbas is not falling down till i saw abbas trying to snuggle the water skin between his chest and the neck of the horse he says i realize that is the power of abbas he said i took out an arrow hit the sheep skin water comes out the force of abbas comes out he turns the horse another person comes hits him on the head now abbas cannot stay on the horse now abbas cannot stay on the horse at arrow comes straight into his eyes now abbas falls onto the ground are what are you listening abbas has fallen on to the ground when people fall they rest their hands to protect them from the fall here abbas has no hands he falls on his face onto the ground as he falls ya sayyidi alaykum minnis salam o husain o aqa o sayyidi mas salam as soon as husain hears this this man of god rises up holds his face is a am in ghata azhari now i have lost all hope now i have lost all hope abbas you have gone my hopes are gone he rushes goes to abbas what does he see abbas is lying one eye there is blood on the other eye there is arrow abbas goes there as he hussein goes to abbas he said abbas my my brother how are you how are you abbas says aka I need a favor from you at this point of time. He's saying, "What favor do you want?" He's saying, "Aka, you remember when I was born? Till you did not come, I did not open my eyes. First person when I came into this world, I saw was your face. The last person that I want to see when I'm going out is your face. Unfortunately, I cannot do that. In one eye there is the arrow. In the other eye there is blood. Had I had my hands, I would not have asked you." for this favor but i don't even have hand who sent takes his daman who sent takes his khaba rida he removes the blood from the eyes of abbas abbas opens his eyes sees who sent inna lillah wa inna ilaihi rajiun abbas is gone who sent looks to the right who sent looks to the left his hope is gone what does he do he did not want to take abbas to the tent he picks up the alam he comes to Was the ten? Sakina is near the ten. Oh, children, my chacha is coming. I told you he will bring the water. As he comes near, the alarm comes. Sakina sees no Abbas. This is Hussein. She throws down the pot. Rushes to Hussein. Oh, Baba, I don't want the water. Bring my chacha back. Bring my chacha, Abbas. Wah, Abbas. Wah, Mat. ما سيعلم الذين ايما تيبا